All right, hello guys. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about our temperature pattern as well as our early snowfall that we got going on across the north central United States. We're going to talk a little bit about the Rockies and how that could even extend a little bit eastward as we head on in within the next 10 days. But before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Now let's get right into things. We're looking at the GFS, and really what we're looking at right now is six hours from now, so this is really, really close to just being about now, and we have some snowfall going on across Idaho, Nevada, Oregon, Montana, Wyoming. No big deal, right? It's that time of year, and it's nothing compared to what we've been dealing with. Uh, I do want to show you, uh, in 42 hours, we will still have some snow showers going on for Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming. After that, this is our snowfall totals through 60 hours for that little first snow event. You know, maybe three to six inches in a few of those pink areas on some high elevation areas, maybe six inches plus in a few of them. But for the most part, with those blues and light blues, we're talking under three inches for the most part in most areas within that. Uh, what I did want to talk about is where things get interesting is after that point. So after the seventh, that's through the seventh. Uh, now we're on the eighth and you can see up, if you look up in the northwestern United States or the southwestern Canada regions, uh, we see some very, very heavy snowfall looking pretty ominous. And what we're going to see as we head on to our next frame for the ninth is that heads south and develops a low pressure system over the states of Wyoming and South Dakota, 996 millibar low pressure system, bringing very heavy snow to Montana once again, as well as some snow showers to Oregon. Idaho, Wyoming. So this just seems like we could see some things happen all over again within the next five days. This isn't long range by any means, guys. This is five days away. So we're pretty certain we are going to have some sort of event here going on. By the 10th, you can see this actually, this is what's different with this system rather than the one that hit, I guess it was about four or five days ago now. Uh, it doesn't just head north back into Canada. This one actually spreads eastward and brings snow to areas like Colorado, Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota, and even Minnesota. And then a high pressure system develops right behind it, bringing in brutal cold air. We're going to talk more about the cold air also towards the later portions of this video. We're going to move on one more frame to the 11th, and you can see that snow makes it all the way to Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. Now we're starting to talk about a little bit of long range. We're 160 hours out and about seven days, so this is getting towards the longer range, but we it is something we really want to keep an eye on because these areas, this is a little bit early for Iowa and Minnesota, especially southern Minnesota and then Wisconsin to be getting snowfall. And you can see we have a 993 millibar low pressure system there over the Great Lakes, so this is potentially a pretty serious snow event. And then you can see everything kind of clears up by the 12th here. We maybe have some snow showers lingering for a few areas in Michigan. But besides that, just some cold air left behind. And we do have some warm air actually developing by this point over the Rockies where we were seeing snow a few days ago uh, on this model run. So things seem to kind of rebound quite a bit here. And notice we have rain for the East Coast. A lot of you have been complaining about getting like no precipitation. We have precipitation, guys. So that's really good news. Now, here's your snowfall total on the entire GFS run. Again, blues, you're looking at under 3 inches of snow. In those purples, it's 3 to 6 inches. And in the pinks, it's 6 to 12 inches of snow. And in some of those lighter shades of greens that you see in areas, I think it's only Montana has some greens, maybe a little bit of Wyoming as well. That's where we're 12 inches plus. So this isn't going to be any sort of like 5 feet of snow type event like we had. But uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't look like it's going to be just flurries either. This could be a pretty serious event here now we're going to take a look at our canadian model as well and this is where things get really interesting we're looking once again this is wednesday the 9th we see our 999 low pressure system right there over south dakota and then again heavy snow or moderate snow at least for idaho and montana by this point on this model run then move on one and you can see uh this model has a little bit of a different outlook on it utah colorado wyoming montana idaho Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota, all receiving moderate snow by this point. And you can see we have a low pressure system there over the four corner states. So this one definitely has it digging way further south here. This is a pretty big deal, guys. Uh, this is big time difference from what, you know, from what we were seeing on the GFS run there. Uh, and then here by the 11th, Nebraska, even a little bit of Kansas there getting some snow showers, some light snow there. So the, the gem model, though it's not even that reliable, 
I do pay attention to it and see what it, I like to see what it shows. Because, you know, sometimes the most random models win out. Sometimes the GFS wins out. Sometimes the European wins out. And then sometimes on that rare occasion, the Canadian model actually seems to be the most accurate for short amounts of times. will kind of look like a pretty good model. The RGEM is a great model, by the way. The short range uh, Canadian model. That is a great, great, great model. My favorite model, actually, out of all of them. Uh, now, looking at Saturday, you can see we have a really, really deep digging trough here. For North Dakota down through uh, to a lot of those central states by the 12th. So we're seeing a lot of cold there around that time frame on the Canadian run here. And we're still seeing snow there for Minnesota, but that looks to die out after this point. Now here's the snowfall total on the Canadian model. You can see we have widespread blues there from from Washington down through to the four corner states and then back up into the Great Lakes states. A lot of snowfall going on here, guys. And even a lot of those widespread purples and pinks there, widespread six inches plus across Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, the Dakotas, and Nebraska, as well as Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan. This could be our first widespread snowstorm actually of the season because, I mean, look at it. I mean, the GFS was showing a lot already and the Canadians showing even more. And also, I know I'm not allowed to show the European model, but I will tell you this much. Uh, it's not too it's not too conservative either with this event. They all seem to be in pretty good agreement. And uh, I would say the GFS is the most conservative. The European is somewhere in between the Canadian and the GFS model. And the European is considered widely considered the best out of all of them. So... It's interesting to note that. Now with this last portion of our video, I did want to look at the temperature patterns here. We're going to start out with the GFS and show a little bit of the Canadian model once again at the end here. Uh, we see that to start things out, uh, this is hours 96. After that first little snow event, we have warm temperatures briefly for the western United States and north central United States. Most of the cold located in the central eastern regions of the United States by this point, Great Lakes regions as well. Uh, but we see that deep cold in southwest Canada, and that's going to really make its presence known in the western United States. As you can see, by the 9th, the, that digging trough is really bringing colder temperatures there very quickly for the northwestern United States. And guys, when we're talking about those purples and pinks there, that's where we're talking about 8 to 20 degrees below average Celsius. So that is some very deep uh, and, and just brutal cold there especially if you're in the Rockies. I mean, your average temperature is much lower than the surrounding areas. So to see that you're well below average is, says a lot. Now by the 10th, you can see things get even colder and move further south and east. We have extreme cold there for Montana, Idaho, Utah, Nevada, Oregon, all of these Rockies, just all of those pink areas are far, far, far below average. And you can see that cutoff line there that's located right over Minnesota, eastern South Dakota, Nebraska, and central Kansas there. That's where we're having a very serious cold front by this point, obviously, that's bringing, that's taking you from far above average temperatures to far below average temperatures in a matter of one day. It's a very, very tight gradient there. By the 11th, you can see that moves into Texas. A lot of those central United States are already overtaken with the extreme cold temperatures here, and that warm temperatures for the east is going to be very short-lived as by the 12th, we see things almost to the east coast here. Again, the east-central United States being the heart of the cold by this point. And then by the 13th, it finally arrives, and the entire eastern United States is, is far below normal temperatures for the 13th of October, which is just going to be crazy considering how warm it's been lately. Uh, I'd be very, very curious to see if this would happen, and I know a lot of people that would be happy to see uh, that we will finally be having this cold of temperatures arrive for the eastern United States. And that's only according to the GFS. Uh, as we take a look at the Canadian model, this is interesting. By the 14th, you can see it's cold from coast to coast here. Uh, this would be extreme and extremely unlikely in my opinion. I've never really seen a pattern like this, you know, maybe occasionally, but just very, very rare type of pattern here where there's only a few select regions in the United States that are actually above average, but from California, Washington, Oregon, all the way to interior New England and the mid-Atlantic, coastal mid-Atlantic, it's all far below normal. That's a very, very unlikely scenario, but you never know. Could happen. Anyway, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video. Be sure to share this video with your friends and family, whether that be Facebook or any other sorts of social medias. It helps me out a lot, so if you do appreciate the channel, that would be 
I'd be extremely grateful for that. Anyway, guys, I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.